Welcome to worship. Pleasure having you all here today. I want to thank the music team here of Madeline and Heidi and Todd and Marilyn. I want to thank the faithful crew behind the scenes of Carolyn and Eldon. And I want to thank you as a congregation for your love and support on this continued ministry as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, in many and various ways. God bless us all this day. Let us start to worship. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. without number and mercies without end we lift our hearts before you and wait upon your word we honor and adore you our great and mighty flower of earthly splendor in time must surely die its fragile bloom surrender to you the Lord most high but hidden from all nature the eternal seed is sown, though small in mortal stature, to heaven's garden grown. For Christ, your gift from heaven, from death has set us free. And we through him are given the final victory. Then hear, O oh gracious Savior, accept the love we bring. That we who know your favor may serve you as our king. And whether our tomorrows be filled with good or ill, we'll triumph through our sorrows and rise to bless you still to marvel at your beauty and glory in your ways and make a joyful duty a sacrifice of praise Good morning. 
First reading is a reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden. Her desert like the garden of the Lord, joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, my salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands will wait for me and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> Today's psalm is Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the same members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and so others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon answered, you're the Messiah, 
the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you this day from our Lord Jesus Christ, his Heavenly Father, and their blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a pleasure to join you again today in worship. It is a pleasure because I can say this, that there are times in each of our lives where we got the question right. We got that question right, and then that teacher, that mentor, that wise person doesn't let it alone. They ask the follow-up question. And you're going, this wasn't on my notes. This is not part of the material. Why are you asking me this question? And that's what Jesus does with his disciples. They ask first off, who do the people around me say that I am? And they say, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, some other prophet. But then he goes here, and this is the question that gets answered correctly. They ask, but who do you say that I am? And Peter gets the answer right. He says, you are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. <sighs> Feeling good about himself, and Jesus goes, yes, exactly. And then Jesus goes further. Because Jesus did not come just to be identified as the Son of God. He did not come here just to be identified as the Christ, which are fantastic, and they are foundational to our faith. They are foundational to our purpose. But like what St. Paul said in the previous lesson, let your minds become transformed with a new mindset. See something in a new light. And when we do that with Christ's identity and we realize that he is the Messiah, he is the Christ, the son of the living God, guess what happens? I feel like Martin Luther right now. What does that mean? It means, and Jesus tells us, that you are the rock on which I will build my church. Well, that sounds great. This confession of faith, this testimony is the foundation of the church. But Jesus doesn't leave it there. His next line is this, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Well, this is where it starts to get a little bit uncomfortable here. Because Christ is now preaching to us about what's going on. Christ doesn't just want us to accept and recognize that he is the son of God who takes away the sins of the world, but that that is done for a purpose. That we are called as Christ's church, as his disciples, to be the rock. The rock on which he will build his church. And that church has a purpose. I don't know about you, but my front door is not designed to keep people in. I'm not going to attack people with my front door of my house. I will close my front door and lock it for one purpose only, to keep people from coming into my house. See, this is my stuff. This, these are my dogs. This is my cat. This is my stuff. This is my home with Amanda. My front door says, no one else come in here without my blessing. But what does Christ say here? And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. See, the gates of Hades aren't attacking us. We are supposed to attack the gates of Hades. We, the church, are supposed to enter into the world and attack what hell has brought to us. The sins of racism, the sins of genderism, of sexism, of orientationism, the sin of complacency and of apathy. 
Christ calls the church built upon the foundation of recognizing that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, to build ourselves with that fortifying, nourishing drink and to move through it and to recognize that that confession means something. It's why we still on Friday mornings during this pandemic and this season will put on our masks and we'll be outside in the parking lot here at Christ Lutheran Church and we will be giving away fresh produce. It's why we still have our mailbox and our giveaway library out front that we also stock routinely with various and sundry gifts like toiletries and toilet paper because we want to work against poverty. It's why we as a denomination, we support the ELCA's advocacy program where, people, where we will advocate for certain laws, for certain causes to be passed and considered in Washington or in Columbus or even here in Lake King County. We are called because you are the Christ and that Christ means something in our lives today. It's not some kind of esoteric Sunday morning experience and then we leave Jesus in the box of the sanctuary and go about our days for the rest of the six days and a half of the week. No, we come here to be fortified through word, through sacrament, through community to become empowered through the Holy Spirit, to then go out into the world and to shatter the gates of Hades. And Christ promises that we will not be doing this by ourselves, that we are joined by the community and even more importantly, perhaps, by the expressions of the Holy Spirit and the Son and the Father. And we will be given the keys of the kingdom of heaven that will empower us because times will change to bind or unbind, to set the captive free, to declare that what used to happen in the past that was acceptable is now no longer acceptable in this day and age. And that it's okay to take a stand. Christ took a stand for us with his Father. He took a stand for us on the cross where he died to take away the sins of the world. And where he was on that cross, where he could have been filled with bitterness and angst, he said, Father, forgive them, where they know not what they do. This is the cross. This is the Christ that we worship, our spiritual worship, when we live his life, as St. Paul says in the Romans reading today. Let us this day become yet again the rock that will shatter the ills and sins that are around us. And let us knock those walls down to bring in the light of Christ or the disenfranchised or the oppressed and the dispossessed. It will have no meaning. That there will no longer be haughty or lowly, as is said in the psalm today, but rather all will be one in Christ Jesus, equal members with different functions each vital, each loved, each redeemed by the one whom we say, you are the Christ, our foundation. Amen.
<clears throat> Let us confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Feel free to call someone, send them a message, share, exchange and share the love of Christ. Amen. At this time, we present our offerings to Christ. Things that he has first given us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, all signs of Christ's gracious love. We pray that he receives them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Some of us started a week ago, some of us started this week, some of us are going to start next week. But we have plenty of students and teachers, administration and staff of all levels in college and here in our city schools of Heath and Newark and Licking Valley. And I'm forgetting what Denny is. Northridge? And Northridge. If I miss the school system, I apologize. Uh, I'm still learning it, but there's a blessing to backpacks. And I ask that uh, this backpack symbolize all of our students and people in the education ministry, that in the midst of this COVID-19 of are we in person, are we studying from home, how do I teach music to kindergartners when they're spread across the county, to teaching kindergarten and other, and other, other subjects. It is amazing, and I admire you all for going through this process. Know that your church loves you, and support you during this time. And any way we can do to help you through this time, let us know. But know that at least your church is praying for you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, bless these backpacks, the people who tote them. Bless our students, our faculty, our administration, and our staff, that they would know your presence during this time. If there's doubt or fears, we ask that you quell them with your gracious presence. When we get frustrated at having to learn through remote distancing or through six feet apart from our teacher or students, be with us as well, that you will grant us your patience and your peace. Be with us all as we learn about your gracious and fantastic, wonderful creation. It's so much, it's this diversity of plant and animal life, of cultures, of time and space. Bless our students that they would know your peace. Bless our teachers, that they would know your presence. Bless our administration, that they would know your insight. And be with us all as we love and support one another during this time. Amen. Now confidence of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission of bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that his spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators, 
and magistrates, mayors and councils, to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and hold us to those who are bereaved in trouble or adversity or sick and in need of care, especially those in our prayer list and those we now lift to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call us into this community, Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church, in which we, though many, are one in Christ. May we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we are hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness. In blessed memory and hope, we thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.